What is a natural arch? How do they form? What are they made out of? What is their geologic story that allows them to withstand the test of time? As we explore arches today, I'm going to answer all of those questions. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today I am standing at Arches National Park. Oh my gosh, I am here at one of the windows at the park and I will be exploring it. But I'm lucky enough to be in Utah for the next couple of days shooting a commercial. And so it's super exciting. I'm thrilled to say the least, but I had to stop at this beautiful location. This is the area of windows. And so you guys know how much I love this type of geology. It's beautiful, it's amazing. And I just only wish I had my Jeep. If it got better gas mileage, I would have totally driven it up here. But eight and a half hours to get to this location, so well worth it. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. And let's go see what we find. guys check it out we're at arches national park i'm actually about to go inside the visitor center because i'm going to get a patch if they have one and a geologic marker i want to show you what is across the street you can see the fault lines this is so cool isn't that cool you can see the gradual step down right there you even got a little hoist to grubbin system going on our first arch of the day Wilson's Arch. This arch is right along the highway and it's completely free for you to stop and hike to. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now I'm not sure if you noticed that on the sign leading up to this arch there was a beautiful stratigraphic column telling you exactly which sandstone that this arch was made up of. So let me explain a stratigraphic column for just a minute. Each one of the sandstones is composed of a certain grain size, certain sorting, and a different time frame made up of different type of sands from around the United States from mountains weathering. The oldest visible layer being the Moenkopi, forming about 240 million years ago to the youngest layers on top being Manco Shale and Dakota Sandstone, forming about 90 million years ago. But Wilson's Arch formed in one of the toughest layers of sandstone in the park, the Trotta sandstone, forming approximately 175 million years ago. Now the arch formation itself is much younger than that, but we'll get into that later. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. That is an awesome arch. One of many is right off the highway. Super easy, Woo, that's accessible. Very steep. It's really freezing. Oh. I'm just glad to keep it together long enough to see how beautiful that is. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Ooh. If you don't have a national park pass or you've never been to a national park because you don't have one in your area, the entrance fee is $30 to $35 per car. It's relatively cheap considering what's going on. They have to pay their employees, make these paths, and keep the parks very safe. If you're lucky, they do have park days where they allow car loads to get in for free. So that's a bonus. You just have to keep an eye on the website for the national park you're interested in going to. The geologic feature that we're looking at here is extremely important for the formation of an arch. These are called fins. They're what's left over from giant sandstone blocks that have been cut through deep fault action and mechanical weathering that further take on iconic features like balancing rock. A perfectly balancing precarious rock that is almost the height of the Statue of Liberty, aka an inappropriate rock. I am hiking to Delicate Arch Viewpoint Trail. I found this fascinating because it's a question I get a lot of where the green color in the rocks come from. It doesn't come from copper at all. It actually comes from the minerals illite and chlorite that are both formed from iron. Well, I've never been to Arches, everybody. Arches National Park is here to protect these beautiful sandstone features, but yet they still allow you to come in here and drive your car around and walk around on these awesome trails. Now let's break down where sand comes from and arch formations. Okay, the sand here at Arches came from mountains deteriorating, old lake beds, old marshes. The sand here is made, or the sandstone here is made up of quartz. 
because the quartz will not turn into clays. And everything that weathers out, washes away, is usually clay, but the sand is what gets compacted and solidifies with usually silicate and fine grained silicate sand. And so over time you get these huge mountains. Most of them were old sand dunes that got solidified. But the way that you get arches and other gnoming like features is because of mechanical weathering. Now mechanical weathering happens in several different ways, but the most common way, and especially here, is due to water and snow. And it gets stuck in the cracks and as it freezes, it expands. As it expands, it cracks open those fractures in the rock and over time they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now those particles, they fall away, they deteriorate, and then you're left with the features behind me. Now those features behind me are further weathered with sand and water and wind. And so sand is basically sanding the sandstone. And that sounded better in my head, but really that's what's happening. And so these features are preserved usually because they're a little bit harder, a little bit more silicate solidified that sandstone. So that's the short version. The park also has hoodoo type features, similar to Bryce Canyon, that you can see in the Devil's Garden area, home of the Landscape Arch, the largest arch in the park. You can even embark on off-road adventures for high clearance vehicles in order to get to Tower Arch. Let's go into a little bit of detail about how the park formed. The entire park is actually sitting on top of a giant salt bed, and it's pretty much responsible for everything you see in the park. Now, the salt was deposited in the Colorado Plateau around 300 million years ago. Now, the water eventually evaporated, leaving the salt behind. Then over millions of years, sand and debris particles started to fill in the plateau through wind and rain and other tributaries. Now, this debris eventually compressed into rocks over time, forming almost a mile thick layer. Scientists know that salt under pressure is not very stable. Now, the weight of this enormous layer of rock eventually caused the salt layer to shift and liquefy. This pushed rocks over top other rocks, creating domes, and then whole sections fell down into the giant cavities that it created. If that wasn't enough, the geology decided to get really spicy with giant deep faults, making this surface area even more unstable. And you can actually see the visible displacement at the visitor center in Moab of 2,000 and 500 feet. Now it was because of this fault creating huge vertical cracks that contributed to the development of the arches we see today. Now due to the earth's natural surface erosion, it stripped down the younger rock layers from the sandstone that we know today. And there are two major layers, a more salmon red colored sandstone called the Entrada sandstone deposited approximately 160 million years ago as an egger or a giant sand sea, also AKA like a large sand dune. And then that more like buff taupe color of sandstone, which is the Navajo sandstone. And the Navajo sandstone is approximately the same age, but it was transported from massive dune fields across North America through ancient rivers and wind, and eventually settled in the Colorado Plateau. The thing that makes the Navajo sandstone lighter than the Entrada sandstone is there is less iron inclusion in the quartz. These are just the two primary sandstones that are in the park that make up the majority of the arches because they're the most stable. They are in no way the only layers that represent the stratigraphic column. There are a lot of different layers of sandstone throughout the park and the geologic history. Now after that wild geological erosional process of stripping down those unstable depositional layers, we're left with gigantic fins that I was talking about earlier. These fins are the narrow sliver-like blocks that the arches eventually form in. Even though these fins were made out of fairly stable sandstone, still there are a multitude of arches that were formed and then collapsed. But the harder, more stable sandstone is what survived. And all it took to start creating just a part of this arch was a little bit of water inside of a crack. So just how old are the arches themselves? We know that the youngest unit of rock here is approximately 90 million years old. But then we know that a specific amount of time went by in order to create the fins that were further broken down. And then the arches started. If we think deductively, any of the given arches could have taken millions of years in order to form. They didn't form overnight. It is an extremely slow process. And each arch shaping extremely differently, again, based on the sandstone and the type of weathering, whether it's mechanical or chemical. And oh yeah, chemical just being acidic rain or maybe some salt in the sand mixing in with the clays, helping dissolve things a little bit more quickly. And the process is continuously in action. Every single year, these arches 
are changing. And one day, the ones that we see today will disappear, but new ones will continue to form because geology will continue to move forward. Now, can we do anything about this on our own? Yes, we can. National parks exist for many reasons, but one of them is to preserve the features that we love to go see. So when you go see them, be respectful. Follow the rules. They're there for a reason. Take pictures, not rocks. Pack it in and pack it out. Be kind to the area. And these features will last for many, many years to come so that more people can come and see them. And remember, have fun outside. Nature is a wonderful place. Right there is Balancing Rock. And as we pan over, that is considered the Garden of Eden. And then that is the area of windows. And that is the North Window Rock. And then we have just all of these beautiful monuments and then those hills. Current temperature check-in is 24 degrees. These are what they're calling the petrified sand dunes. When really, if you think about it, all of these are petrified sand dunes. They were all once sand and then went through silicification with silicate to create sandstone. All right guys, we're actually in the same area that they filmed the Thelma and Louise jump for the car, I believe, or we're close one way or another. This is where that's at. Ah! I look at that sandstone in the background. And then beyond Thelma and Louise, we have 260 million years worth of geology right there. Look at the pattern. That is wild. Oh my gosh, that just goes up. That's pretty sweet. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, and I hope you loved seeing these beautiful arches and the gorgeous sandstone around Moab. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you on the next one. There's snow on the ground. Oh my gosh. It was so cold here. It's eight degrees right now. It's eight degrees.